Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. Oh my word, welcome to 2024. Yes, happy <laughs> How did new we, year. Happy new year. How did we get here? <laughs> we survived 2023. That's oh how we got here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Crazy, crazy. And I feel like 2023, if I had to like, you know how people do like word of the year? And I didn't uh, do a word. Uh, I, d- I didn't do a guiding word last year, but 2023 felt like a sort of holding pattern, right? Because we had mm. we had the strikes. Yeah. You know, we had just come. So we basically just came out of the pandemic and we were like all clear. And then we went into the strikes and that was like a holding pattern. And like then the year just like ended and it was like, OK, so mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe how was how was your 2023 over in, in the Midwest? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a perfect explanation of it. I mean, uh, you know, I'm here kind of working at home by myself. So every day kind of starts to blend into the next. So um, steady state kind of, you know, it was good. Okay. It, was, it was a good okay. year. Nothing outrageous happened, but nothing super fantastic happened either. But I got a lot done. Um, I feel like I made progress on things, but, you know, I'm hoping for uh, a lot more to happen in 2024. And I think a lot's going to happen. I think 2024 is going to be the the year things really start to take off in a lot of different ways. For better or for worse, I guess I could say. Yeah. So, So just for funsies. Let's talk about what's on our bingo cards for uh, 2024. And we just had an earthquake in L.A., so I can knock that one off of my bingo oh. card. So I've already filled out one square. What do you got? <laughs> I'm going to have to put that in my free square because I don't think we're going to get an earthquake in Ohio in 2024. If you got an earthquake in Ohio, like, apocalypse, it has happened, right? <laughs> but it has happened twice in my life. I've, I felt an get earthquake in, in Cleveland, yes. Oh, my god! But gosh. they were literally... 15 years ago and like 15 years before that it's like very rare dang yeah but it has happened so oh my word that's funny but maybe okay so it was 15 years ago maybe we're due this year maybe i should put it on my bingo card it it could be right yeah Yeah. so what's on so what's on your free square then i guess since uh (laughs) you don't have earthquake my i don't know what's in my free square i'm not gonna i'm not gonna label every square but I think definitely I want on my bingo card. I thought about AI a lot. Of course, we talk about that a lot. I yes. bet we learn that a theatrical released movie was generated at least in part by AI. This oh my year. gosh. I think, I, I think it comes out like after the fact, like somebody like uh, exposes it like, oh, that movie was, I know they used AI in that movie. I think that happens this year and that's going to cause a lot of discussion in the AI Ooh. space. Yeah, let's let's hone it down. I'm gonna say Q3, Q4. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think yeah. it'd be later. Uh, but yeah. I, I bet they're already playing with it and tinkering with it. And because, oh. and we've talked about this. You you even mentioned this at, at, when we were talking off stream about Hollywood's kind of quiet right now. Even though all the agents and managers got excited when the strike ended and were ready to go with all the the stuff that was should have been like, you know, pent up uh, writing that should have been coming out. And you said it was quiet. So I'm betting there was it's, some, some AI stuff going on the I mean, it's not the like scenes. there's a floodgate. It's not like someone like unleashed the dam. I mean, if I had to put that on my on my card, I would say pilot season's going to be really like truncated if it okay. even happens. Like I feel like pilot season's mm. either going to be super short or like not really talked about. And I think if we see any forward movement, it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be the fall because like, even when the writer's strike ended, what was it like October ish of 2023, nothing really happened. You still didn't really see like more auditions or something because people had to write stuff. Mm. So either it's a shortened pilot season or like everything kind of gets pushed back. Because that should be happening. Like literally they should be in the, the pitching phase right now of it. Right. Yeah, pilot season for the series regulars, this is uh, talking actors now, usually starts, I always tell people January 11 is when I got to be back in town, because mm. usually by mid-January is when you start seeing people go out for stuff if they're going to become series regulars, which means pilots should have really already been picked up and approved before this. 
Yeah. They should have been, it should have been happening in November, December. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a slow, you know, moving train. You got to like get the people to work on it and stuff. It's not like you can just be like, we're doing it. And then like a week later you go. So. Yeah. You know, Hollywood reporter doesn't actually, don't, I don't think they have their annual pilot season, um, you know, uh, feature on their site yet. They usually always have that around this time where you can start tracking all the pilots. Maybe it's a little early because they might have to get, you know, um, into production before people start, you know, talking about them. Yeah. 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 But there's, it's been quiet. So I think that uh, is going to start later. Okay. <laughs> That's on mine. What about you? Oh, um, my other thing was, uh, that we we get a new CSI or NCIS show that's that's um <laughs> based on Mars. <laughs> oh, CSI space, I love it. CSI, oh my god, CSI Mars. Yeah, I, I I mean they literally came out. What was the one I just saw online? It was CSI. Is it Sydney for in Australia? There's an Australian CSI now. No, it's an NCIS. Wow, it took them that. There's an NCIS Australia or Sydney now. I feel like that's pretty belated. Like. Why did it take them so long to go to Australia? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they've they've been almost everywhere else. So we don't have a CSI Cleveland yet, though. Okay, wait. Here's a question, though. If they do CSI in space, it just sounds so funny. CSI in space. But if they do like CSI Mars, would they ever be like, oh, a Martian did it? Or do you think it would only be like human humans murdering? Uh, I humans? think it would be human. I think uh you know trying to be grounded somewhat you know like what uh-huh. what would law enforcement on mars be like you know it, it, let's let's say you know 10 or 15 years out elon musk gets his spaceship working and they send a hundred thousand people you know they want to send a maybe they just send a thousand people to mars well that's a pretty pretty big community things can happen you know mm-hmm. although when you think about it sorry CBS, i'm just going down me. this <laughs> I, I'm i'm going down this rabbit hole here like you could just be like, oh, someone disappeared out the, like, spaceport hole, the and airlock. you could never prove it, you know what I mean? Because, like, they just float off in space. Unless they float back, you could never prove that somebody got murdered. I don't know. You'd have to go get their body, and, well, in Mars, there's gravity, so, I mean, it wouldn't fly out into space. It would just be left on the surface. Oh, okay, okay. It might fly further than a normal body, but... <laughs> <laughs> these are the things we ponder in the beginning yeah. of the year i think i was thinking of the moon okay call mark mark watley mark watley uh he was the, the character in the martian he can he okay can be on, on you the can tell me on, uh, ncis mars oh my gosh yeah i i would actually maybe watch csi in space i, I, I don't think know. it'd be cool i think it'd be cool. yeah it would be interesting oh, that's just too funny i'm sorry <laughs> call, call me cbs call me oh my gosh oh my okay gosh. what else you got I feel like there's been some rumbling in the streaming space. Mm. And I feel like, I know like Twitch had some issues towards the end of the year dealing with um, what could be shown, basically. Uh, and you guys can look it up on online. It's something to do with basically like nudity online, you know. Mm. Um, but I just, it's funny because you and I have talked about this before. We both watch a lot of YouTube. Like I don't even really watch a lot of TV anymore. YouTube is one of the last non ad spaces. I mean, like you can pay to not watch ads, but you know what I'm saying? Like everything's basically becoming cable again with Mm -hmm. ads. I just kind of wonder, I wonder how the streaming space is going to look because they need, they need free content. But it's not like content creators make a lot of money doing what they do. And now we're at a point where, like, you want good quality, good scripts, good production values. You know what I mean? You want Mm -hmm. that level that you see on TV. But, like, average Joe creator can't do that sustainably. You know what I mean? It's most they get most of their money in sponsorships now. And I've seen a lot more recently. I watch, you know, a lot of different news and technology podcasts. And they're getting really savvy about putting it right into their content. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to review the new MacBook Pro, and it mm-hmm. has all these features. And if you want to have a better webcam, here's a webcam you can use that's sponsored by. And they literally, like, jam it right into the content. And it's, it's uh, you can, you know, scroll past it, of course. But um, 
you know, they know they're not getting their, their, their income from views. So they're, they're, yeah. and, and they know that YouTube is taking more and more of the pre-roll ads and the post-roll ads, um, that they insert. Yeah. Which they also know people can get ad blockers for, but when they put the ad into their content, it's harder to remove it, you know, and yeah, you, kinda, you know, and you're watching it and it's just playing on another screen kind of thing. So you're exposed to those ads pretty, pretty well. I don't begrudge them to, to, to have sponsors and run ads. You know, that's where the creators, uh, they have to start, they have to become their own um, ad revenue team kind of thing. You know, they have to go out mm -hmm. and get those sponsorships and, you know, that's tricky. Nobody teaches you how to get, you know, be, you know, manage sponsorships. Um, there yeah. are some good podcasts and some other creators I've seen that have talked about it a lot. So, so there's, they're out there trying to help the community, you know, get better about it. But I mean, it's like if you, if one of your novels, you know, you were doing your audio book and you just inserted a com commercial in the middle of chapters or something like that, you know, mm. so you could make more <laughs> money kidding. on your audio book. Yeah. And you know what? I will actually add on speaking of creator space. And this ties in with AI. I've been thinking about this one a lot, too. It started because I was watching. There's so many uh, commentary channels, right? People commenting on other content. And so it was this this commenter on. He just kind of does everything YouTube. But he was talking about a prank, uh, a prankster who's very obnoxious. And what I thought was interesting, and he didn't say it in the thing, but I was watching it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, some of this has to be staged because the way it was filmed, the quality of it, the fact that you're showing people's faces, some of the some of the pranks might be pranks and some of them are definitely staged. And I know for a fact, being an actor, I have seen casting notices for pranks. So, mm, yes, pranks yeah. can be staged. And it kind of got me thinking, follow me through on this here. Remember in journalism, I don't remember, uh, I don't know what your school taught you. I know for us as a photographer, our rule was five or less people, you must have names and, you know, identifying information, they have to give permission to show the, the photo or we cannot run it. And as an actor, everything is consent, right? That's a big deal right now with the AI thing is consent. Mm -hmm. You want to use my footage in a commercial? I have to consent, right? I have to sign off on that. But that's a gray space. Creators film things all the time in public. I doubt that they get permission unless they're in a bigger playing field right like that prankster i was talking about where i'm mm -hmm. like i'm pretty sure based off your viewership numbers and based off the production value probably some of these people gave consent and if they didn't like they were shooting them uh from behind the head so you couldn't see the face of the person that they were pranking so i wonder if average everyday people who are in these creator videos are now going to have to start consenting like everybody mm -hmm. else yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that could slow down the rise of AI a little bit because the average person who isn't in these creative fields and so doesn't pay attention to like how AI affects creators, you know, writers, actors, uh, artists, blah, blah, blah. But now you, Joe Schmo, who works a nine to five, if you think someone could sell off your face and voice, you might, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You want to give consent too. Mm -hmm. So I think like the average person is going to start realizing more about consent, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The uh, typical um, uh, signs, we used to put them up when we did filming for our shorts or, or and stuff in public places mm -hmm. that um, you have to have, like, they call it a line release where there's just a big sign that says you might be filmed because you're here and we're doing this and you consent yep. by being here. It's kind of mm -hmm. like that, but taking it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, did you ever did you ever think about that? Because there's a lot of creators I watch who like they go to conferences or they do commentary. And it's like I'm like, you're in a public space going to a convention. I can identify people in your video. Did you get consent for all of those people? Because if you were a true journalist, you would have to get consent. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Even in journalism, you have to get consent. I mean, there for public public uh, uh, venues and events. Sometimes there's that's that's isn't that a fair use kind of thing? I think it depends. Like if you're like filming, like say a speaker or something and you're in a crowd, you probably have to identify the speaker. Or if you like interview somebody directly or like if you, you know, show two it's or like three a people. It's thing kind of. Yeah. 
like I said, for us, our rule was like five or less people, you must get consent. If it's a big crowd, like when we shot a riot, come on, it's not like you're going to be running from the police and be like, what's your name? You know, like, you know, there's obvious, you know, some. But in in theory, if you could identify that person, you had to get their name unless it was an extenuating circumstance where you really just could not. So what's this what's the square in the bingo card say? Is this a a creator uh, lawsuits over uh, identity? I don't know if it would be lawsuits. I think it would just be I I think it would just be more people understanding uh, you know like having to give consent to their likeness okay. like the average person not just like someone in the arts who's already okay. used to it so it's gonna be a very tightly uh, packed uh, bingo square um <laughs> yes <it's, laughs> we'll just use little acronyms <laughs> yeah kind of building on that though because we we're talking about uh cable and streaming and stuff like that uh there already have been talks about uh streamer bundles happening more often uh, not just like Disney bundling like Hulu and Disney Plus and ESPN, which they own all of those, uh, mm-hmm. you know, talking about like, who is it? Was it uh, Disney and Paramount? Actually, I think it was the one I recently heard, mm-hmm. you know, talking about doing a bundle and streaming. Because the other thing I think that's going to happen is you're going to see a higher increase of streaming churn, which I have started doing, which is where mm-hmm. you realize, geez, I'm spending a lot of money on all these different streamers and I can't watch all of them because there's too much to watch. So you start planning out your your streaming by you know quarters or something like that like like i had disney plus for a month or two to catch up on star wars and marvel and now now i got rid of it and you know and i Mm. put my netflix netflix has been on pause for uh almost two months for me because i haven't had time to watch it and i've been kind of focusing on getting catching up on hulu and and uh amazon lately and uh, amazon's raising their rates uh starting later this month so when my renew comes up for that, I got to decide, well, maybe it's time to take a pause on Amazon. You know, so I think that's going to start happening a lot more. I think you're going to see, and, and that's going to be something that's going to be really impactful on streaming revenues. You know, yeah. They're, they're raising rates, but then you're going to see a lot of churn in the, uh, in the audience. Well, I think I had read somewhere too. It's interesting. You mentioned this one. There was something about, it might've been a vlog and they were like, you know, they've basically hit the cap with streamers like there's only so many new it doesn't exponentially grow forever you know and they're Mm. realizing oops we've run out of people to to have subscribe and so you don't get new revenue and then they're like ah you know they freak out and it's funny you mentioned the bundling i did see a thing over christmas that was like it was like get hbo hulu disney it was like everything but like two streamers for like 9.99 a month and i was like huh i might actually buy that i didn't buy it though but i was like that's such a good deal you know but i bet they're all ad supported tiers oh because they always they charge a lot more for the the um you know ad free or limited commercial tiers yeah yeah it's just like everyone thought, oh, we can go to streaming because we won't have to pay. We won't have to watch commercials. But now even Netflix is talking about, you know, Netflix has ad tiers or what was the other one that just announced ads? Um, uh, da, da, da. Oh, it was Amazon. Was it Amazon that just announced they're going to add ads as well? Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all adding ads. It's it's like even though you pay for it, now you got to pay. Now you have to watch ads. Cable is everyone's looking at cable going, hmm, maybe maybe it's time to go back to the cable with the DVRs because <laughs> you could fast forward through the commercials and the DVRs. In fact, I had a DVR that had a skip button, which would skip all the commercials every time you had a commercial mm-hmm. break. Mm-hmm. And you can't you can't skip the commercials on most of the streamers. They're just, you know, the disable the controls when you get to the commercials. I mean, OK, I don't I'm not putting this one on my bingo card, but. I do think it's stupid that you pay for a service like a streaming or whatever, and you still have to watch commercials. And like, we're kind of of that old school age. I didn't mind commercials as a kid because it was like bathroom break, go get food, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was kind of nice to have Mm -hmm. that intermission. And I actually I did. I need to I need to write down where I find all this stuff. But there was something about people were like, hey, we want intermissions back in the movies. Because they wanted the break. They wanted the mental break. I think I just read something about some uh, some theaters putting in intermissions in some of these really long movies. Yeah. Like three-hour movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, sometimes it's kind of nice to have that 
just that little break to like run to the bathroom, go get food, whatever, whatever. Like, I think that's why I wouldn't ever binge a show. I don't have that kind of patience to sit for three or four hours and watch a show. I mean, like I can barely sit still for one. The theaters would love it because they give them a, a second round of food. People who didn't buy food the first time or who got hungry during the first half of the movie, they would totally, uh, but nobody wants to get oh, up and go get yeah. food because they don't want to wait in line. And you don't want to miss. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's a good point. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. We can put that on the bingo card. Return of intermission. Can I put that like adjacent? Maybe that'll be my free square. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I don't know if like, it would be like, yeah, you know, but anyway, it's, it's a maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what else do you got? <laughs> um, what else do I got? Um, we have, uh, talked about this before i think this is your idea actually i'm stealing it uh all the unionization going on this uh 2023 was oh, a big, yeah. big year for unions we know that for sure uh but there are mm-hmm. a lot of people in hollywood that aren't unionized yet and there's been a lot of talk about that happening in fact i think there have been a few votes at some of the studios uh, about unionizing animators or vfx uh, artists and in the gaming space yes yes definitely um i've been following all that because i'm I'm a video game writer, so I'm adjacent. I don't know if they include writers in that, to be honest. I think it's more the tech people, like the people who are doing the, the art developers and the and yeah. yeah, yeah, the coding and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like the VO people and the writers are adjacent. So mm. I'm like, I'll be here to support, you know, because I think, yeah, it's funny because gaming is one of the, I think it even might even be bigger revenue than film and TV. And it takes a lot longer. It's a mm-hmm. lot more complex. And, oh, it's you know, they get paid the, the film industry. That's for sure. Yeah, they get paid so little, you know, um, animation is another one that like, yeah, they've been kind of, you know, pushed to the side for a long time. I would love for them to unionize. You know, I think even as of now, uh, they're still not guild recognized. Right. They're still like writers guild adjacent. Mm -hmm. as far as like animation writers Mm -hmm. so you know i mean there's definitely there are some some equality that has to happen there are some like the simpsons and what have you that are are you know exempted or or included in the writers guild just because they're such huge shows Mm -hmm. that and those actors are so iconic and you know tied to those characters Mm -hmm. are you are you included in the union for your audiobook voiceovers or is it just for like voiceovers for like animation or or features or um commercial uh sag covers all of that does okay, yeah I so. okay yeah cool so lots more union so now you know, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. yeah lots of unionizing yes uh, which i think good. is good anything else coming up oh, in the uh, writing space or film space for the bingo card oh wow um i feel like i've hit a lot of it because yeah i think i think we just won't really know until i mean honestly this sounds weird but i feel like if i had to put this on the card i feel like we're not going to really know how things shape up in the industry as far as like ai and like what's happening with anything until Mm -hmm. at least the spring I just feel like we're all still in a holding pattern for a while. So I guess I'd put that on my, on one of my squares is just holding pattern through at least Q1. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think is the craziest thing that could possibly happen? Like just out of your, out of your, the wildest ideas. (laughs) Rise of the machines. I don't, yeah, I, I, I worry about that one. I'll be honest. Um, Here's, here's a crazy one. Uh, mm -hmm. Elon Musk's Neuralink that they, we're going to see more about that coming out where the, the brain interface kind of stuff where oh. um, because that's going to lead to things like the virtual um, full dive VR kind of thing where you're uh, like sword art online, where you're in the game, literally in your brain, like it's pumped into your brain that way. Yeah. I think that's a long shot, but I, I think there might be some experimenting with that. They're doing amazing things with it. I mean, they've literally given uh, people who, who couldn't talk their voices back and stuff like that. Yeah. That through these uh, connections were directly into their brain where they're able to make a voice synthesizer talk. Um, you know, oh, wait, them. this is, this is an election year, isn't it? It is. Okay. So you know what I'm putting on my card right now? That okay. AI is going to AI and ethics around AI is going to be something on the ticket. 
Oh, okay. I'm putting that one on my card. Are yeah. you saying we're going to have an AI presidential candidate? <laughs> no, no. I'm saying because I know, for example, Biden's already like looking at that stuff. Right. And I don't really know if it's on the Republicans' radar. I haven't been paying attention. But like, I have a feeling it's going to be something that comes up. It might not be like the primary ticket thing, but I think some candidates on both sides are going to be like, here's what we're going to talk about ethics and AI. Mm. I think it's going to be something in the, in the voting for sure. Okay. It better be. That kind of <laughs> brings us back. We kind of started with AI. So we're coming back to it. Yeah. But that's in the, pol- you're in the politics side. I'm on the entertainment side. All right. Cool. But I mean, it affects it all. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what is on all of your guys's, what, what's that even a word? I don't even know. Guises. Forgive me. It's early. Your guys's, yes. All of use, uses. Use guys's. <laughs> use uses all. <laughs> uses all. All you... use guys's. What's on your uh, 2024 bingo card? Yes. Right. Yes. Better grammar than us. <laughs> I is a writer. I is a right. Hey, you know what? It's the it's the first of the year. I had a late night. That's my excuse. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy New Year to all of you. Um, thanks for listening again. Do follow us on in social media uh, at WG Therapy at Twitter and Instagram, and www.writerscripttherapy.com. Otherwise, uh, hands up when you get a bingo, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next time. <laughs>